Hello, welcome to Political Forum for this Wednesday, March 26, 2014. Please join me in welcoming our guest for today, Alderman Ariel Reboiras of the 30th Ward. Alderman, thank you for appearing on Political Forum. Thank you for having me. Uh, hello, everyone. Political Forum is brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. I'm your host for today, Monica Torres Linares, a CAN TV board member. This is a live and interactive show. So during the next 25 minutes, we will try to get to as many as your calls and questions. So if you have any comments or questions for Alderman Reboiras, please call 312-738-1060. Alderman, please tell us about yourself. Well, I've been in city council now for um, 11 years. Uh, I've uh, been in city government. I'm aging myself when I say 35 years, but I, I started as a school teacher. Uh, I left teaching school and I started working for the city of Chicago in 1979 and so I've been in city government uh, 35 years, the last 11 as an alderman and it's probably the toughest job that I've had in my 35 years uh, in serving the public but I enjoy it and that's why I'm here. Great, thank you for that alderman. Alderman, um, we have a list of topics uh, that are ready that we're going to jump right in. Please tell us about the snow budget. Well, we had a, a, a very difficult snow season, as everyone has understood uh, what, what we've seen. We had snow uh, two days ago. Uh, it hasn't stopped, but spring will be here soon. Uh, as you know, we budget uh, probably about $22 million a year for a snow budget, and we've, gone, we've, we've surpassed that by probably at least $15 million. Uh, the snow has not stopped. Uh, it's been uh, third record on, on, in history in the Chicago and we've had a lot of damage to our roads. Obviously, you can see it today. Um, but it's been a it's been a tough winter, and uh, and we cannot wait till spring is here. We can't wait till that 60 degree gets here, and that'll be soon, I hope. But uh, you know, we we've uh, we've uh, used uh, every bit of the budget dollars that we had, and uh, we're using now the uh, dollars that we received from our our taxes from our fuel uh, fuel taxes. Uh, so. Uh, we'll be fine, uh, and we're going to finish this season, and uh, we're going to think about it again uh, uh, starting in uh, in September, uh, about our budget season. But uh, it was it was a tough winter, and as everyone know that, and, and I appreciate uh, everyone that uh, was very uh, calm. There were there were some tough issues. We understood that, uh, but uh, it's very difficult to fight uh, Mother Nature, as as everyone knows. Thank you, Alderman. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of uh, snow, um, how about those potholes? How about them potholes? Uh, we hear about potholes almost daily uh, in our offices. Uh, you know, the, the, the toughest thing that we dealt with this year, as everyone knows, is, is the, the cold, and thaw, cold and thaw freezes. We've had, I think it was 133 days of uh, below uh, uh, freezing temperatures. And every time you have that, there's a change in the pavement, uh, and, and, and obviously it, uh, the surface crumbles. And when you have that, uh, it's just, it's impossible to keep up with it. You can't fill potholes in the wintertime. you got to wait for the snow to go away, and you do it with cold patch because the, the hot plant, uh, plant, the hot stuff does not come out till April 15. Uh, that's our, our hot patching. Right now we're using cold patching. Uh, we the mayor has done uh, uh, extensive work. We by this time last year, I think we've had we had about 650,000 uh, potholes filled. Uh, we've surpassed that this year already. In fact, in fact, the mayor has brought on the summer uh, uh, program employees so that we have not less than six crews of, of pothole filling crews working seven days a week. Some of them are working in the evening. And a couple of crews are working on weekends as well. Makes it easier when there's less less vehicles in the street. So we're catching up to them. Please, uh, again, uh, feel free to call us uh, at our office. Uh, call 311, report it. Um, you know, just give us a general vicinity where it's at. And you can actually track uh, where these uh, potholes are getting uh, fixed, where the calls are coming into. But please, use that 311 system. Use that, uh, call it in. Um, they're not fun. We understand that, uh, and they're ruining cars, and and we know about that. Uh, but do call our office at seven seven three seven nine four three zero nine five, or call the three one one system, and they'll be more than happy to take your calls. 
uh, and tell us all about the problems that we're having with, with the potholes. Report them, report them, report them. Thank and, you, thank mm -hmm. you, Alderman. And I'm going to show um, the Alderman's contact information. Um, his address is 3559 North Milwaukee Avenue, and his phone number is 773-794-3095. And then that's his email, ward30 at cityofchicago.org. Um, Alderman, please tell us about the third ward menu for 2014. 30th ward menu? The... As, as for those of you that don't know what the menu, uh, we we have budget called a menu. Every alderman has a, a dollar amount assigned to his or her ward. Uh, discretionary funds. You can use them for lighting, concrete work, resurfacing. Um, and it doesn't go a long way. It's only $1.3 million. When you consider what a street resurfacing project costs today, it's about $35,000 to resurface a street. Uh, and that what that means is that we don't we don't have enough money to do the entire area, but uh, that's uh, that's how we do, do talk to our menus. It's my understanding we have a caller. Yes, we have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, I saw today that some aldermen are thinking about reviving the push for a ban on plastic bags in the city. Um, do you think that something like that is actually likely to go through, and, and do you support it? I wasn't supporting it until. Uh, uh, there's there, we we're gonna take a final vote on it uh, maybe in another week or two. Um, I I don't support uh, the the, uh, st the 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 stopping of the use of plastic bags if we have to go with with uh, with uh, regular bags, and you know if it's, uh, which is not good for the environment. We have got to cut down more trees. What I don't support if it's going to cost us more for the consumer because somebody's got to pay for it. Um, you know, what I like to see is a program where we provide our own bags. We bring our own bags uh, that, that cuts out uh, more cost on the, on the, on the, uh, on the service end. And, and, and the consumer will always have a bag. And they, can, they can bring their own bags and reuse them. Um, but the bags are causing problems. They sure are. They, you can't recycle them. Uh, they're causing a lot of problems in the sewer systems. But uh, you know you gotta you gotta hear both sides, and and if the consumer's gonna pay more, then I don't support it. If the consumer's gonna pay for, it. Uh, but if if we can come up to some uh, compromise agreement where no one's gonna hurt on and the environment's gonna win, and it's gonna be less, it's gonna be cost effective for the for the consumer, uh, which means that we're not paying the extra dollars to employees uh, from cleaning uh, uh, the bag debris from sewers. Then I'm for it, uh, but but it's a t it's a tough matter right now, and that's why it didn't it didn't go through for a vote y uh, yesterday. But thank you for calling on that. Thank you, caller, for that question. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, uh, thank you for taking my call. Uh, my question, Alderman, has to do with our relationship with um, Russia in terms of Moscow, as I recall it being one of our sister cities. Sort of given everything that's happened with um, Russia in the past couple of weeks in, in Crimea. What is the, the status of our relationship with Moscow as a city? Well, we, as of yesterday, or actually I should say yesterday, or in, uh, on April 2nd, we will take a, a vote on city council to, to cease uh, relations with sister cities in Moscow because of what's going on today in Crimea uh, and, and the Ukrainian community. Uh, uh, it's a good question. We had a, a long debate on this uh, yesterday. Uh, it's not something that we want to, we, we don't want to hurt our relationships with, because we're talking about people relationships. Uh, but it, if nothing else, it is, a, it is a symbolic message that we're sending to the president, president out there in Russia that uh, we care about what, what's going on in the European community and, and we, we're not happy with what's going on. And it's just a, a, a symbolic message to say, uh, we we understand what's going on and and they need to fix it. Uh, will they because of what we do here in Chicago? I don't know, but if nothing else, it's going to send a, a strong message. Thank you, caller, for that question. Yeah, that was a hearing that we had on, on the Human Relations Committee yesterday um, with the um, with obviously sister cities and and, and you know you, you it, it it was a tough one. Uh, but 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 it's it, it's it's a symbolic message that we're sending uh, from Chicago, uh, and if Chicago does it, I'm sure there'll be other cities that'll do the same. 
so that's uh, for now. Uh, it's not, it's not going to happen. Okay. Thank you, Alderman, mm -hmm. for that update. Um, getting back to our agenda, uh, can you tell us about any constructions on the ward? Maybe the Department of Water? Or we have, Canada? well, today uh, uh, I had the pleasure of introducing our Commissioner of Water, uh, Tom Powers, and the Mayor. Uh, we were at the uh, uh, one of our senior centers in, on the northwest side at 3160 North Milwaukee Avenue where we're going to be rolling out uh, water uh, projects. These are capital projects. Capital project is, is so, so for those of you that uh, don't understand the word in terms of construction, these are, these are projects that are a million dollars and, and above. Uh, what we're going to be doing is resurfacing, uh, taking down the infrastructure uh, uh, from the city of Chicago in certain areas on Milwaukee Avenue uh, on the northwest side. There's, there's three locations right now, but primarily uh, north, on the uh, north uh, Milwaukee Avenue. Um, we, we replace the water mains, the sewer mains, and in some cases we also replace the uh, gas mains that are there, all utility lines. Now you have to understand that some of our, some of our uh, water mains are as old as, uh, as the early 19th century. Uh, the mayor spoke about, uh, he, had a, he has a trunk, a piece of a trunk that was used in the, in the 1800s to supply water main in the downtown area in the city of Chicago. He has that. So there are still some, some uh, infrastructure that has the old uh, uh, water mains that are made out of wood in the early, in the, eight, in the 1800s. So we're going to be resurfacing uh, probably about 133 miles of streets in the city of Chicago because of our infrastructure repairs that are coming up. Great. Thank you, Alderman. We have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hello. Hello. Yes, you are on the air. Please tell us what's your question. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask about the cab drivers and wanting a raise or whatever. Um, I, I know everybody deserves a raise, but... These cab drivers don't service most of the city of Chicago, so I mean, you know, how how can you expect something that you don't give something? That's my comment. It's a good question. I I ride the cab uh, from time to time, and uh, and you have a tough job. I, I feel for all the, our cab drivers uh, in, in the city of Chicago and, and the entire country. Um, I support a, a raise. Uh, for uh, all you cab drivers, it's very, it's a very difficult and dangerous job at times. Uh, I, I understand what you're going through. Um, uh, so, but but I I'm not the sole voter in license committee. I sit in the license committee, but I am not the sole voter there. Uh, but I'm hoping that we can come up with some legislation that, if nothing else, uh, will will help uh, the cost of living for the cab drivers that we have uh, in the city of Chicago because it's a tough job. Thank you for that question. Thank you, Carla, for that question. Alderman, you were talking about uh, repairing of the water mains. I was. We're, 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 uh, today marks the first day of the 2014 infrastructure uh, repairs of underground water mains and sewers in the city of Chicago. Um, the good thing is that we're going to be replacing water mains. We're going to be replacing sewer, sewer structures that are in many cases 100 years old so it'll there'll be less of a breakdown there'll be uh, uh, new service lines provided uh, and we'll have the 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 top portion which is the street and sidewalks repaired at no cost to the taxpayers these are federal dollars that we're, we're finally getting on board and also state of Illinois dollars that are that are supporting this project uh, the good thing is that many of these projects will will resurface our streets when they're done, including what People's Gas is doing right now. People's Gas is is, is doing hundreds of miles of of infrastructure repair, and what they do now is they they replace anything that they tear up on the street. They replace with new asphalt, uh, including including concrete work. So there's a lot going on in Chicago. Our infrastructure is very very old. Uh, we want to thank uh, all our constituents for being patient uh, while all this is going on. But uh, it's it you know pardon our dust, uh, but it'll 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 get done and, it, and it'll get done in less breakage. There'll be less less cost to our taxpayers when we have new infrastructure. 
Now, uh, when we were talking about the what we did today uh, with the mayor and uh, our commissioner of water, uh, they're resurfacing uh, uh, over 133 miles of, of city streets because of the new infrastructure repairs that we're doing. Now, that'll also cut costs on, on, on most of our, it'll be, they should be, there should be less potholes next year because when you have new resurfaced streets, you'll have less potholes. Problem is that we're patching and patching and patching, uh, and, and in some cases it doesn't work. It just doesn't work here in Chicago. It's too cold. The frost line went below five feet this year, uh, and many of our, our city uh, water uh, customers uh, didn't have water uh, because of the level, uh, because of the depth of the uh, frost line. Uh, so we're hoping that we not only learn something from this, uh, um, you know, unfortunately, when it, when it gets below zero, we got to keep our water running. Very little trickle of water will alleviate a lot of problems in the city of Chicago, as we experienced this year. Thank you, Alderman. You're watching Political Forum, a community service brought to you by Can TV. If you have any questions for the Alderman, this is a call-in show. Please call us at 312-738-1060. We actually have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Yes, good evening. Good evening. Tomorrow marks the one-year anniversary of the Chicago Teachers Union strike uh, downtown. Uh, now, it's been a, a year since, um, since that strike, and now we know that 47 schools uh, have closed. And today... Uh, 49. Yeah, 49. And today, uh, the uh, chief, uh, Barbara Bird Bennett, uh, called the closings sort of a success in spite of the dire predictions. I just want to know, what, what's your take? Well, I can tell you about uh, the school... Let's put it this way. When you think about the school closures, you have to think that 140 schools across the city of Chicago were, were uh, attended 50%. 50%. Some of the schools that were collated, there's been some signs of success. I can tell you from my perspective that the collated schools that we have are now uh, uh, number one. They're they're in, in terms of of, uh, of how they they scored the, the schools uh, learning level. They're level one today. Does that mean it works everywhere? I will tell you this. I can I can honestly say that if if the kids the kids were not moved unless unless they they felt that they were going to go to a better learning environment. And that's what the mayor wanted. That's what uh, our, our uh, Barbara Bird Bennett wanted, our CEO. And and I'm 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 uh, based on what I'm reading today. It has been a success, and I'm hoping that we get better numbers, better numbers. Um, you know, I look. Nobody wants to see any schools closed. I I was there. I was at the rallies as well. I didn't want to see any of my schools closed. Um, and but, you know, but if if, if if we can, if we can just go through this in the next couple of years, I, th I think we're going to be fine. Uh, I, I, you know, I thought I'm one to say that I thought that 49 schools were too many, um, but I'm, I'm, I, I've, I've got my, uh, I, I complete trust that we're going to, we're going to go in the right direction on this, and and it's, it's not an easy subject to discuss. Uh, we don't vote on on, on, on the budget for schools. Uh, Aldermen do not. Um, we do take we do take some stands and 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 and, and you know it's 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 what we feel strongly. Um, I'm very passionate about uh, education system because I was a teacher. Um, but I the last thing you want is what you want from every kid is every child to be exposed to a better learning environment. And essentially, that's what they're going to get through this through this CEO that we have today. Thank you, caller, for that question. Alderman, are there any new housing projects in your ward? Actually, we have we have several that have uh, actually began. We have six uh, six buildings. Uh, uh, rental units are, is what's on the market today, uh, just a block away from our office. And these are beautiful structures, uh, all brick construction uh, with security and parking. Parking is a big issue, especially when you live off of North uh, Milwaukee Avenue on the north side. Uh, there's very little parking. The last thing you want to do is take parking away from the constituents that have already 
living there, and you can't park in, 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 a, in an area on Milwaukee Avenue during snow season. So it does uh, create a problem. But we have sufficient parking, and these are the units that we need. Um, we also just uh, unveiled another uh, small development uh, on, on, the, on the St. Hyacinth community of uh, uh, six uh, townhomes that will be starting hopefully in another two, three months. So right. we, have, we have a little bit of, of uh, construction going, and I'm, I'm happy to see that. Thank you, Alderman. Mm -hmm. We have another caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? I have a comment. Yes, ma'am. On, on election day, I happened to go into polling places, and I was uh, according to polling places, and I went in the bathroom. In the bathroom, they didn't have no toilet tissue, uh, no soap, no paper towels. It was on the west side. Uh -huh. And I asked the student how did they uh, use the bathroom. She said the teacher would give them a piece of a tissue when they get ready to go to the bathroom. And I thought that was very unsanitized. That's not good. No, no. What, what you should do is call the Board of Elections. Uh, board, of, board of election? Yes, ma'am. Call us. I mean, this is school now. This is school. Uh, and 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 they were well. The the school. You should, the, the, I mean, where what happened to the principal? I mean, uh, that's, that's some, what I know. I don't know. And I happen to be. I was there just coordinating the election. And I happen to use the bathroom and no toilet tissue, no soap, no paper towel. And that was a voting. It was a voting uh, poll. Yeah, the voting polling place. They happen to be in there, you know, working the polls. And I happen to go in the bathroom. No toilet tissue. No soap. No well, you sh you should let they, you they should let the uh, yeah you sh I think you should let the board of elections know that because not, not they, the board of elections because they're the board not the board it's the school that got the issue I I know but they the the board of elections pays the school to have uh, the judges of yeah, election yeah but the principal need to do something about the bathroom a absolutely for the absolutely and then they should call the, the principal on that I call them or the or the school or something you know. Uh, some, some, uh, uh, something about the school because uh, and get the petition in the neighborhood because the sun sanitizer was sure to be going to the bathroom. With no yeah, paper. there's no, there's no excuse for that. I'm sorry you went through that. Yeah. Okay. For the children, what I'm thinking about myself, you know. Oh, the, so the children have no tissue. The children is no, is no paper there for the children to use. No toilet tissue, and no soap. What's, and the, what the school is that? To get them a piece of paper when they get to go to the bathroom. What school is that, ma'am? Oh, I didn't want. It's the Borac School on 16th Street. We don't know the name of the school? Dvorak on 16th Street. Dvorak? Uh-huh. On 16th and Center Park. I'm going to make a call on that school myself. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, caller, for that question. Alderman, we were talking about the housing projects. I'm, I'm sorry. We, we have some it. development going on right now. Um, yeah, and, and the... Um, so anytime you see construction, uh, it's 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 a it's a breath of fresh air when you see some work going on. So because it puts people to work. Not only that, it, you know, it, especially uh, housing projects, we need them. We need them. Uh, um, we also have uh, the North and Pulaski project. Uh, getting it's almost uh, the shell's been put up. This is a. Uh, near elderly uh, uh, housing project uh, and it's been put up by Hispanic Housing. And I, I, the, what, what I tell everyone, I've been waiting for this project for seven years, now I'm eligible to receive AARP, so I've been waiting for a long time for this project and I'm glad it's off the ground. Thank you, Alderman. Alderman, we just have a few minutes left. Um, is there any final words, uh, words that you would like to tell the audience? Well, um, as the alderman of the 30th ward, uh, you just we've we've just uh, experienced a very very uh, ferocious harsh winter. Uh, soon they'll be uh, we'll, we'll, they'll start warming up. Uh, we need to think about our kids that are in school. We need to make sure that they're uh, they're staying in school. That uh, we have a plan for them for activities uh, during the spring program, the summer months. Uh, but stay in touch uh, with us. Uh, I will be uh, hosting town hall meetings now uh, on a quarterly basis uh, and, and we will listen to every concern that our community has and I want to thank you for having me here today. Thank you Alderman. Thank you Alderman for appearing on Political Forum. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you viewers for your calls. Please join us for another edition of Political Forum next, next Wednesday. Have a good evening.